Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to make my award winning corned beef pasties. Please subscribe and please share. Anyway we'll get right on to the video. The recipe is below the video in the description. Right, you want 454 grams of plain flour. You want 114 grams of butter and 114 grams of white shortening and also 114 grams of water and a pinch of salt. Right, now what you want to do, guys, is sieve the flour. Now, it does come pre-sieved anyway, but it's best just to sieve it just in case. Right, now we're going to pop that into the bowl. It's always best to sieve onto paper, it makes it much easier. Now we're going to add in the butter and the white shortening. Right, now we're, all we're going to do is crumb this all up and make it into a fairly fine crumb. It's always best to sort of warm your butter and shorten it up prior to using it. You don't want it too hard. Right, we're almost there. It's getting quite fine. That's it. Almost there. So get it nice and crumb. That's it. Now what we're going to do is just make a well, and now we're going to pot up our water into the middle. And now we're just going to work this in to make it into a pastry. That's it. Get it in. Get all that stuff off the bottom of the bowl. Get all that fat mixed in. That's it, it's all coming off the side of the bowl now. So we're almost ready to plonk it onto the table. This just takes a few minutes to do really. Right, we'll put it on the table and we'll give it a good mix in on the table. That's to ensure all your fat is mixed into that flour. Basically we're making it into like um, a bit of a dough but not a bread dough if you can get my drift. So it wants to feel like pastry, it doesn't want to feel like bread dough. It's very difficult with this type of flour. Also, you could be using stronger flour. It's, it's the gluten. It tends to be very stringy and, and it can get a little bit tight on occasions and then you'll have to add more water. But once that fat's warmed up, it'll be very more pliable. That's it, it's starting to get very pliable now. And a good way of testing it is just to pull a piece off. Right, let's get in there. And we'll pull a piece off. Right, yeah. Now that's starting to feel really, really nice. It feels like plasticine when it's in your hand. You can squeeze it and there's something about pastry. Right. All we're going to do now is put it back into the bowl 
And now we're going to cover this with cling film. Now what you want to do with this guys is put it into a fridge to rest. The recipe is under the video in the description. First you want 340 grams of corned beef, an egg, 500 grams of potato, 100 grams of onion, some butter, some milk, and some salt and obviously you need your pastry which we've made earlier from the fridge. My first job guys peel in the spuds. Now I prefer to use fresh ones than use them from a supermarket. I just love peeling potatoes it's my favorite job. Now guys cut these up into boiling hot water and we're going to be boiling these for around about 20 minutes. And whilst they're boiling, we'll get on with cutting up the onions. First off, take the skin off the onions. A little tip guys, Pop the onion into water and it won't make your eyes run. Unless you're hardened like myself. Right, what you want to do guys is cut your onion up into small little pieces. Smaller the better. Don't cut your fingers. Right, and now we'll put them into a pot. Next job is undoing the tin of corned beef. What a pain this is. And this is what I've done earlier. That took me 20 minutes to get that tin open. Right guys, now what we're going to be doing is cutting the corned beef up into small cubes. I always think corned beef reminds me of cat food. It's always got that same colour. But obviously corned beef smells nice. Once you've got this cubed up, we'll put this on the side. And we'll come back to this in a minute. Right, your potatoes are ready. Best to test them first though. What we do is we'll pop in a knife or a fork just to make sure they are actually done. If they're soft in the middle, then they're fine. You can take them off a little bit earlier, don't matter. Right, now what we're going to do is drain off the water from the potatoes and put them into the other pot. You know where I'm going with this. And then we'll use that water to blanch off the onions. So you can put your onions straight in. You'll only want to be cooking these for around about five minutes. Bring them to the boil. That's right, they're already starting to look as though they're ready. Take them off. Now we're going to strain the potatoes. And strain the onions. Put your potatoes into a pot. A nice knob of butter. You can put on put in what you like really, but I just put a knob of butter in. Right, you need a pinch of salt. And now what we're going to do is give it a good mash up.
bit of milk. Mashed potatoes always got half milk in it. Guess it's a good mash down. Well, right, now what we're going to do, guys, now we're going to add in your onions. That's it, get them all out the pot. Now we're going to mash that all around as well. So it's all well mashed in. Right, and this is where your corned beef comes in. You've got your small chunks and then just lob them straight in. That's it, and then just mash this all up. Now seriously guys, this is starting to look like, uh, I remember having a cat and it used to be the same type of color as this. It's got a kitty cat color. There you go, it's all starting to look nice now. It's all coming down nicely. And the flavor of that is absolutely lush. And there you go, nice consistency. And what we do now is put this on the side to cool down for around about one hour. Right guys, the next stage we're gonna do, we're gonna be wanting to cut your pastry in half. Then what we're gonna do is cut this into eight little pieces. So sort of roll them out a bit, or oblongs, whichever the case may be. And then you cut each of these into four. And now guys, what you want to be doing is rolling them out as round as possible. You don't have to be too fussy, but it does help if they are round. Right, and now what we're going to do is pin them out to around about 17 centimetres round. Try not to get too much flour on them. That's it, you don't have to be too fuzzy in getting them around, but as round as you can possibly get. Now, for the size of these, though it's 17 centimetres, some of you might have a 17 centimetre cutter in the cupboard. Me, I haven't, so I always use the base of a jug. All right, guys, now spread them out so they're all nice and lined up. Bit of OCD coming into action here. That's it, line them all up. Now get your cutter or your jug and just press down. That's right. And then what we can do then, what I do is go round with a knife afterwards. Unless you've got a cutter and you cut them out in one go. That's it, just trim them off. If you've got any pastry left, you can always make that into a pie later. Right, and now we go with the egg wash around the outside. Don't put too much egg on, guys, because it will make it too sticky and you won't be able to fold them up properly. If you've ever done this before, you'll know what I'm talking about. Right, and now we plonk our corned beef mix in the middle. Wow, wow, wow. 
You don't have to be too, as long as it's spread out amongst them. You could wait in if you want, but I always think the guesstimate's near enough. Right, now what we're gonna do then, guys, is just fold this over into like a half a moon. This is where I say, if you've got too much egg on, you'll find it all be sticky and you won't be able to pick up the pastry. Try and keep the meat in the middle of the pie, otherwise it'll just boil out. Hence why you don't see me using too much flour. But don't get me wrong, if it is a bit too sticky, you're gonna have to use flour. Right, then you just fold over your thumb you keep doing this to the end of the pasty. Just fold over your thumb. Like that. And once again, fold over your thumb. Put your thumb down. And what you're gonna do is just fold over that thumb. See? Fold over the thumb. And you've turned into a Cornish pasty maker. Yeah! Obviously these aren't Cornish pasties, but we, you know, you know where I'm coming from, guys. Just keep folding that over your thumb. And there we go, guys. Next thing to do, we're gonna put some holes in the top, breathing holes to let the steam come out. And now we're going to trade them up. Now you, I've got baking wires here and on top I'm going to put baking parchment. Or if you've got that fancy paper which you can just wash, you can use that as well. And that's it, just OCD them onto the tray. I'm not sure if I just do this because I'm filming it. I just seem to line everything up. Right now, guys, what we're gonna do now is egg wash them. And this egg wash is a mixture of egg and water. The best idea is to put one coat on, let it dry, and then put another coat on. It just gives it that nice glazy look. That's if you want a nice glazy look, obviously. Sometimes it looks a bit artificial. Right, and then what we do then, we rest these for at least 25 to 30 minutes before going in the oven. That's just to let the pastry cover before it gets put in the oven. You wanna preset your oven now at 220 to 230 Celsius. Right, that's half an hour. Right, we now we'll pop them into the oven. Now bear this in mind guys, my oven's iffy. So it's not working well. And this is the one that killed my Victoria sponge. So bear in mind, what comes out of this isn't necessarily what you're gonna come out with. Though they look okay, um, I can assure you I've seen better baked ones. Right, and we bake them in here for 35 to 40 minutes. Halfway through, depending on the type of oven you've got, turn them round. In particular, this oven, I should just throw in the dustbin really and start over. Right, you want them to be golden brown. And if you've baked them properly, they won't have split open. Now my oven has deliberately played havoc with me, but needless to say, it's not a bad job. They were properly cooked. 
and that is actually spot on there really well guys i hope you enjoyed that video i've got to say that is a lovely corned beef pasty the flavor just floods through what finishes off as well if you want to guys whilst you've got your corned beef in there is put a layer of a branston pickle inside as well and that just really even tops it off the flavor is just to die for please subscribe and please share don't forget your recipe is below the video in the description do check out my playlists and we'll see you again very shortly in the next video. Laters!